Hi, I'm Patrick Pond, CEO and founder of Favro, and this is the Learn From Leaders podcast. The background to this show is that Favro customers are some of the most innovative companies in the world. Enterprises wanting to be more agile, software as a service companies scaling fast, and game developers and publishers wanting to master live ops. So we get to know some truly inspiring leaders in product development, marketing, operations, sales, executive management. And what we do here is that we interview them about leadership so we can all learn from them. Let's go. And we are live with, uh, with Alan. Hey, welcome to the show. Hi there. Super great to have you. I'm uh, really looking forward to this conversation. Um, I think you know, we met a very long time ago you know, when I was uh, running Handsoft and I guess you were at Criterion at the time. Um, mm-hmm. But um, you know, I don't want to speak too much about uh, the past today. We want to, you know, talk about um, you know what a what a you know leadership in a modern studio looks like. But but just before we you know we jump into that, you know, for the ones who haven't met you, um, can you just give a little bit, you know, the whole story leading up to um, to what you know where you are today, and 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 maybe say a few things about the company since it's quite new. Sure. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background on myself. Um, so. Um, I, uh, I'm head of development operations at Fuse Games, uh, based in, uh, in the UK, um, in, um, Guildford, which is a little bit of a hub for games development, uh, in the UK. Um, so Fuse Games was, uh, established back in January of this year. Um, the studio, uh, founders are all, uh, ex, uh, Criterion and Electronic Arts, uh, leadership. Um, we are currently, I think, around about 30 people. Um, you know, so we've gone relatively fast uh, building out the foundation of our studio. Um, and yeah, it's exciting times for us um, at Fuse Games. Uh, we just got our office uh, last week. Um, so we're actually no longer um, all working remote. We can actually go to an office and, and work together, which is really exciting. Um, and yeah, we're a um, AAA uh, games company. Um, um and uh we're you know really excited to be to get getting started um my background was um i i was with ea and criterion for um i think around about 17 years so a long time um um always working as a project manager or development director as they're called there uh, and eventually uh, became part of the um studio leadership team of criterion uh and kind of working with that studio through um, it's collaborations with uh, DICE on Star Wars Battlefront 2, um, the Battlefield games, uh, and then more recently, the Need for Speed games. Um, so Need for Speed Heat and then Need for Speed Unbound, which came out last uh, in the last year. Um, and, uh, you know, prior to that, working on all the burnout games uh, with, with uh, Criterion. Uh, prior to that, been working in games uh, oh a very long time since about 1994. Um, showing my age there, uh, I started off as a traditional animator. Uh, actually, after graduating from Edinburgh School of Art, and uh, you know worked as an animator uh, um, in games, and sort of moved up into a production leadership role uh, quite quickly as we expanded the, the company I was with, and you know worked in a few different companies, but settled in EA for. The majority of my career but uh you know now on to exciting new adventures really um which kind of really sums up how i think about games i think about working in games as it's all about adventures really um so yeah that's kind of i guess a quick summary of me i live in edinburgh um very happy here with my wife and three kids and we love it here um and uh you know great to be working in a new studio with colleagues that i worked with for so long uh awesome yeah. thanks and you know, I, I guess you could speak for a long time about, you know, what, what excites you about, you know, uh, the games you're going to make now. But um, mm-hmm. since, uh, you know, you're so new, um, I guess we can't speak too much about that. But also, since this uh, this podcast is about leadership, um, what I wanted to ask you is, you know, having such a long, long experience in, in leadership positions, um, what are the things that you're most excited about with the new studio? You know, now when you have a, you know, a bit of a fresh sheet and you can take all those, um, you know, learnings from, from, you know, all those years and, you know, and, 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 um, you know, you know, put that to action in, in, in something new, you know, what, what, what with that excites you the most? 
Um, yeah, I mean, what's exciting about starting a new studio is, as I say, the great thing is that it's with people that I've worked with for a long time. So we we know each other really, really well, and it cuts a lot of this off. You know, we can cut to the shorthand uh, of um, understanding each other, and, and we know how to interact and how to collaborate, and and that's that's a, a great thing. So the exciting thing is, um, you know, that um, wealth of history together, but then also being able to establish a studio based on the same values we've always had, but kind of through a new lens because you know, we are a new startup and that's a little bit of a different world to be part of a large organization like uh, EA. So, um, you know, I always believe in, and I sort of strongly believe in this attitude about, um, you know, leadership being about sort of uh, being humble and a, a real sort of sense of servant leadership that you're there to support and enable people to help people achieve their goals um, and um, a lot of what I do is based on that foundation of how do I help people kind of move forward and, and, and achieve great things um, you know I'm, I'm lucky to work with lots of very smart people that are much smarter than me so I'm there to kind of get things out of the way to to help give uh, make sure they've got really good clear goals but also constraints to move forward so it's great starting something new on those principles of that we've we've always had those those are values we've always had, but through a kind of new lens as a startup, really. How um I mean you mentioned servant leadership. Um, uh, you know how, how you know it it's um you know it's a it's a term that um you know I I I, I like to use myself, but um but what does it mean to you? And I think it would be helpful for the audience. You know, just to get a little bit of a definition. You know what uh, what what what. What you mean by that, and maybe you can contrast a little bit to, like, you know, what's the opposite of that? Just we get a little bit of compare and contrast yeah. between servant leadership and, let's say, you know, what 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 is the opposite and what does that look like? Sure, I think, um, you know, the the opposite is very much a command and control kind of approach, which I think is quite old fashioned, and I don't think is um, is terribly useful when you're looking at, a, you know, an organization of people, no matter what the scale is, but an organization of people who are really really smart who you know come from the lots of different disciplines lots of different crafts so you know uh, command and control is you know we are you're, you're going here you're going in this direction and you're micromanaging people along the way uh, in every sense of the word you're making sure that people you know exactly what people are doing every day and you're tracking the the kind of details of what they're doing and and you know you you, you can operate an organization like that but it, it needs a lot of management overhead and i don't think that you're getting the most out of people especially uh, in a creative industry where you've got um you know a lot of very smart people people who are you know think lots of people that think very differently have got to kind of come together so i think um the approach that i sort of think is is kind of more useful is to to, is more of a servant leadership approach, which I think really, for me, that means you're giving people really strong, clear goals. You're helping them understand what we're trying to achieve, but you're giving them context, lots of strong context to understand why, you know, what we're trying to achieve, what are the benefits. Uh, and then importantly, you are given um, constraints as well. So you're saying, hey, we're, we've got this amount of time, we have this amount of budget, and we're trying to go here. Uh, and here's why, uh, and you know, you know, then giving people um, with that those, that clear goal, you agree with them, and those constraints, you're given kind of giving them the autonomy within that to figure out how they achieve that goal. Um, and that doesn't mean you just take your hands off the wheel and and then just watch it happen. You you have to be there to to serve the team, to support the team, to give them little bits of feedback or be clear that sometimes you're giving them direction, but you're kind of helping sort of steer them on the way. And, and a lot of it is, um, you know, removing, uh, removing barriers, um, you know, giving them context, giving them insights such as you know, how are they tracking, how are they progressing through the work? Um, that I think is the difference, you know, command and control, very directive and with whole heavy management overhead versus a, uh, more servant-based approach, which is about goals um, with constraints and kind of enabling and supporting people to achieve what they need to achieve, which is, as I say, I think far more useful for, uh, you know, trying to make something that's creative, like a video game. 
So I have a I have a follow up question to that. That um, you know, to to just to make this a little bit more challenging. So, um, if you um, you know, how do you think about senior talent versus junior talent? Because you know, when I think about servant leadership and and you know, listening to what you're saying, it's a little bit the whole kind of you know, you know, why and what versus you know, the talent takes care of the you know the how, and you don't micromanage that. But but if you also have some quite junior talent, I mean, they might you know need some hand holding also on. On, on, on the how? I mean, how do you solve that? Do you do it by kind of mixing senior and junior talent in the team or do you simply only hire senior talent? Or, I mean, you know, what's your thoughts around that? I think, um, yeah, you do need to recognize that, you know, maybe more junior people need a bit more guidance, absolutely. Um, but I think um, everyone, um, everyone benefits from context. Um, so I think that it's important to give context and, and you know, as much of that as feels like responsible to do right and the, the right thing to do right so you do have to recognize that some of the more junior people need a bit more support and guidance um but i think everyone benefits from from context um because everyone is able to determine to some degree you know or have an insight a point of view in like we're trying to achieve this goal and here's how i think i'd like to achieve it um, they just might need a bit more help if they're more junior to figure out that path um so um you mentioned that you know you you now you know have have an office and you know getting into that and, and that's exciting um you know what's your plan moving forward are you are you gonna have you know a little bit of a hybrid so it's a bit of flexibility on office versus working remotely or are you going to be 100 percent in office or you know what's your strategy there uh so we're we're hybrids um our approach though is is remote first with everything so you know we make sure that um the people that are at home because we do have some remote people that, that they are not they'll feel excluded so you know every 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 meeting is set up as a uh, as a zoom meeting we make sure we um you know we kind of are are kind of diligent about providing kind of um uh, notes and and uh, we you know rather than using like you know physical whiteboards we use things like miro so it's like highly collaborative and digital um, so we try and work in that kind of remote first way so that everyone no matter where they are can can not feel excluded um but yeah we're look we're we're moving to a hybrid model where we have um a couple of days a week which are kind of mandatory in the office days and then the office because we've not filled the office yet the office is available to everyone who wants it for the rest of the week um but as i say we do have um we do have some remote people um the the thing I'd say though is that for us hybrid isn't hey just come in when you want to come in um, because if we approach it like that then you you end up in a situation where a, a small team or uh, or a group of people that are working together they don't kind of sync up at the same time so very quickly they 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 can end up thinking well what's the point in me being in because my colleagues are not in on these days so what we try and do as I say is have a mandatory two days um that people are, are in so that we maximize that time where the majority of people are in on those days and able to collaborate together rather than this sort of very distributed approach so that's we take a slightly different approach with hybrid than maybe some other studios that are, are much more flexible with that we, we try and make it those fixed days so that people maximize that collaboration time cool but i like the thing you said with uh you know remote first you know so that you know, whoever is remote will always feel like you know the part of the team. We we actually have exactly the the same the same principle since you know we do meet from time to time, but but you know no one who's remote should ever feel like they're kind of like, you know a satellite. You know they sh they should mm -hmm. be feeling like they're part of the core. And you know I, I you know you 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 dropped the mirror there, so I have to plug one thing, which is that you know we're we're soon to release um, a really great um, integration between uh, you know favor and mirror. So you know then. You know, since you're using both, you know now you can use them uh, in 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 tandem. Um, but enough of the of the plugging there. Um, so, uh, what about um, you know autonomy? Um, you know, I guess you know this way of working requires quite quite a high level of autonomy. You know, not only because you um, um, you have a hybrid model, but also because of the high level of of trust you seem to put into uh, in, into each team member. Um, I mean, if you would make kind of a you know top list of important things to do as a senior leader to 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 actually create autonomy in the team, I mean, um, you know, what, what what would be your um, what would be your top tips? I'd say it comes back to um, 
being having very clear goals that are agreed upon like what you're trying to achieve and that's a that's kind of like a contract almost that you know, you're agreeing to so that's the that's the first thing that's really important to have um so that you know someone understands and you're agreeing with a an individual or a group of people what this is you're trying to achieve so that's the first part but then also with that um very uh clear constraints um and you know constraints can be come in a number of ways it can be you know the obvious things are time and budget but it might be um you know we're making this game feature and it has to it has to um behave a bit like this for example here's you're, you're given some sort of constraints so and then within that the, the 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 individual or the group of people have got a degree of autonomy to work within but then also um regular review um something that's very core to 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 us is that sort of um um build it play it change it loop so you know we're a sort of uh, software first in terms of how we think so you know regularly kind of checking in with people regularly kind of reviewing where things where, where they're at is really important but then also being very clear with feedback what is feedback for people to just consider and think about uh, and what is direction um being really clear on the difference there is important so that you're helping steer people uh, when they've got that kind of um they're working with that autonomy to try and achieve their uh, their their goal um and that all works well when you know you're working with a, a group of people who are like working in a very collaborative way um to achieve achieve those goals i think do you uh, do you find that you have to uh, recruit somewhat um uh differently um to optimize for for these things um i think that um to some degree i think it's very important for us that um you know we've always been very sort of values led as or, as a as a team or and certainly fuse as organization very much about that so you know when we when we are sort of looking for talent and obviously right now we're kind of growing the studio so we're you know we're looking for people and, and hiring all the time um we we look obviously clearly at the sort of skills and experience and that you know fit from that perspective but we put a lot of energy into trying to understand if that person um fits with our values and that's not that we want everyone to kind of be the same but um we you know we want people to bring fresh points of view but you know we think about our values it's you know for us it's about a love of games a love of making games but we're looking for people who are you know energetic collaborators who you know you know but also who bring a sense of urgency and want to move forward uh, but believe that the way to do that is by collaborating rather than being a, an individual sort of hero you know um and you know that people who are are who are you know happy and comfortable to share the work and like to to get involved um as well as you know um people who are kind of have that learning mentality uh, but also have a sort of sense of being being humble in themselves as well so you know we look for all these qualities in, in people we look for look at fit very seriously um because you know we 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 know that um i, I always think that values are are just you and your best day right it's like who you aspire to be and you're not always that person but you want to be that person that sometimes you are and sometimes you're less like that so we want people that share that ambition and those qualities um so we do have to put energy into that to make sure that the the people that join us kind of have those sort of uh, some of those beliefs but but can bring bring a little bit of their own flavor to that you mentioned um you mentioned the collaborative approach um so when it comes to you know uh, collaborative you know you know planning and you know development in general um you know what are the um, um you know what are the key things that are important to to make that really work you know apart from the things you already said but maybe you can also share you know some of the things that you know maybe you have experienced you know that kind of breaks you know the collaboration you know some some of the mm -hmm. things that you know you need to watch you know if you're you know you yourself as a servant leader you know you know it, it's it's also about i guess watching out for when you see some some things happening that you know maybe you, you want to kind of nib in the bud yeah i think so I, first of all collaboration for me has always been personally hugely important um 
I always think that everything I do is like not very good like, until I sort of iterate it and involve other people. So, you know, I like to have an approach where I sort of a sketch of an idea that's there to help, you know, a conversation get started. And it's always better than that than a blank sheet of paper. But, you know, starting with that and then collaborating with people to make that idea, you know, good and hopefully great is kind of, you know, it's, it's the heart of who I am. Uh, and at the heart, I think, of a lot of the people in the studio, that's who they, who they are, they believe that deeply. Um, so with planning, I always think about, um, you know, the, the biggest value of planning is about a group of people coming together, trying to un understand what they're trying to achieve and the work within that, and then aligning, reaching an alignment on that, and then making a commitment to that, and then moving forward with that. That's the biggest benefit in planning. Um, but I always joke that, you know, um, sometimes it's described as the plan is the best wrong you have today. But I always joke and say the plan's wrong because, you know, what I mean by that is that you can't you can't have all the information really to guarantee that this plan is going to play out. But the important thing is you're you're making a commitment and a, a, as, a, as a group of people to to move forward and try and um, achieve something. Um, and I think that um you know with that um you know with that commitment moving forward and then real knowing that the plan is, is always going to need revisited and you're always going to have to replan um is the important bit um and, and in my experience one of the gotchas i guess is that i sometimes find that when you're trying to plan something with a group of people there becomes a sort of sense of planning anxiety and anxiety that what if i'm wrong uh, am I going to be held accountable to that? And is something good or bad going to happen to me if it takes me four days when I thought it was three? And, you know, it's so always trying to work hard to make sure we kind of get over this almost like planning anxiety in an individual or group of people and sort of say things like, hey, don't worry, the plan is wrong. We're going to learn stuff on the way here. But let's just make, you know, let's try and understand what we're trying to achieve, how much effort we think that is, what our dependencies are. And then make a commitment move forward in the knowledge that we're going to go on a journey to try and deliver this thing and we're going to learn and adapt you know we're going to we're going to you know revisit the plan we're going to re-estimate and then we're going to achieve our goal at the end of it um, and you can only really 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 know how long it t took when you're done when you finish the work you know and i mean you know when you have this very collaborative approach i mean everyone's also very involved so you know there's there's a much bigger sense of, of ownership so I, I i like what you said about you know planning anxiety there you know and, and how to how to tackle that that's uh that's a good point but i mean if i, I i'll throw out something you know potentially controversial here um i think maybe some of that also comes from that uh you know but you know an observation from 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 you know my view is that there's still you know quite a lot of um you know, pattern going on in the industry where where managers are basically trying to you know plan away uncertainty. Um, you know, basically, you know, if you if you can create this like massively detailed plan, you know, suddenly you have planned away uncertainty. You basically end up with an old school you know GAN schedule, and mm -hmm. and and then of course I think that creates a lot of fear. You know, because there's someone else who's made that plan and then holding you accountable to it instead of mm -hmm. this more collaborative approach. So, I mean, since you've been around for for a long time and and you know have have a you know I think a you know wide view on the industry. Do do you agree with my statement that we're we still haven't you know not we haven't we haven't got further than I, I hope that we got at this point in, in the industry that we still have a lot of these kind of old patterns you know left work you know trying to you know plan away uncertainty or instead of yeah. having having it more of a collaborative experience or or you know what what, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there are things, there are some things you can plan with some certainty, right? There's things you can plan in a waterfall way, and you know it's well known, and, and you can you can deliver on that. So it's not it's not it's not necessarily true for everything, but I do think it it's hard, right? I mean, you know, what you know in video game development, you're making something that's fun, and you're making entertainment, and that's slippery by its every nature. It's a creative endeavor. So there's a lot of uncertainty in it whether people want to accept that or not because you just don't know until you you've got it up on screen and you can sit get the controller in your hands and play it right um but you know we live in an environment where there's a lot there's a lot of pressure people want to make sure that something's guaranteed um you know we've all got business responsibilities fiscal responsibilities right so um 
it, it, it is this, there is this eternal conflict of like wanting certainty because of, you know, the business needs, um, but then also the realities, which I think is a, is a creative endeavor. And, and, um, and it's also importantly an endeavor with lots of people who are, you know, have different ways of thinking, different experience. So it, it is, it, it is by its very nature got a bunch of uncertainty in it you can eradicate some of the uncertainty but there's always there's always going to be uncertainty um so i think sometimes we try and convince ourselves that you know somehow we can figure this all out and have that certainty but it's, it's just it's just not it's not true and i think where you do try and make it true you crush the creativity you crush the innovation um but you've got to you've got to you've got to place your bets you know you've got to have some stuff in making a game you have some some stuff that's very well known and very kind of like understood that you know you can deliver with a degree of certainty but you need to allow for the stuff that's that's got more uncertainty because that's the stuff that's um that's that's the innovation and that's the creativity and that's the spark and that's what sets you apart um but yeah i think it's an eternal struggle and it, you know it's a struggle that i think every creative industry has uh, to some degree this conflict between wanting certainty versus the realities of like the creative endeavors we take we 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 we, uh, we, we take on but i think uh, i think there's even even more uh, um you know places i i can't remember which you know you know generalist that said it but you know the kind of you know you know uh, you know plan is nothing but planning is everything you know it's the, mm. so you know even even you know even in war you know it's the same uh, same problem there's like such a big level of uncertainty that you constantly yeah. need to adapt, you know, to to what's happening, and you know, I think I think I I never heard anyone use the the, the word um, creative velocity. I think I might just have invented it now. But if you're if you're able to you know to iterate on the fun, you know, very very fast instead of you know rather following you know your original plan, I think I think you know if if you're able to achieve that, that that's something very powerful. Yeah, I think it, it comes back to for me, it's that. Um, you know, I, I would say, I would say software is the truth. It's not the only truth. You need data. You need to track your project and everything. But if you're pro, if you're software centric in, in what you do and your priority is to always make sure you're looking with, you know, with, with the team looking at the software every day, then you can, you, you have insights, you have information and you can make, you can course correct from there. You can, you can adjust. Uh, and that's how you how you navigate that journey to achieve your goal when you're you're learning as you go as you plan. And um, that I think's got to be the, the heart of how you can manage through that kind of that creative process. You know. Yeah, cool. There's um, there's a lot of the stuff around um, you know the the you know the more collaborative approach that that uh, you know it's 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 music to my ears to hear from you because it's a lot of the you know the the ideas that we had in the beginning, you know, when, when we started, you know, Favor and we thought that, um, you know, the best, the best managers, the best leaders in the world, this is, this is how they operate. But what does that look, uh, you know, in the, in the tool space, you know, before we wrap, I know I, I do actually have to ask you, you know, one favor related question, you know, since, since we do have some alignment here on, you know, our, our focus on, on, uh, on collaboration, um, did did you did you did you see that in the design of of of, of favor and that was a, a, an important factor when when you, when you chose favor because i mean you must have seen every tool under the sun or was it was it simply something totally different no 100 percent. for me the, what i loved about favor is that um i look for tools that make it easy for a team to sort of collaborate and get around something and and the the sort of you know the, the the tool set and and, and what we have with with Favro is enables that it it's, makes it really easy, easy for a team to get around something to build a plan to iterate a plan to understand the, the journey that they're going to go on uh, and also you know it's powerful and flexible to adjust as they go um, you know because there's there's nothing worse than putting um, there are lots of different ways of doing this as you say right but if you put something that's like a database in front of a team. They're not going to engage with that as a as a plan. A plan is useless if it's just something that the project manager worries about. Um, you've got to have something that is easy for the team to engage with as a group and, and collaborate. So um, that that's exactly what we look for, and that's what we find find great in favor of um, yeah, right now. Uh, awesome. So thank you so much for um, for having this conversation with me. Um, I'm very much looking forward to see you know the games that's going to come out of this new studio you know obviously you and 
you know, and your your fellow founders and team, you know, have a have an amazing track record of creating, um, you know, truly great, you know, games for for a long time. And you know, now in the, you know, coming out from from uh, you know studio of your own, um, that that's that's truly exciting. So um, so really looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's sure to be an adventure. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening, and uh, see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, you know what to do. Share it in your social media so more people can take part and learn. And one more thing, check out Favro Academy on favro.com for many more learnings. Thanks for tuning in.